Welcome to my talk. <laughs> um, I'm Katya and today I'll be talking a little bit about my little research I made uh, about what motivates people to contribute to FLOSS projects. So let's proceed. Okay, so first of all, I, I have two questions for you um, and raise your hands. How many of you do you know what free software, open source, Libre software is? Ooh, a lot, most, everybody, <laughs> almost. Um, and the second one, uh, do any of you contribute to any of projects? Ooh, a lot, good. But let's refresh our knowledge. I'll just go through a little bit of definition about what free software is. Um, so it's a computer software distributed under terms that allow users to run software for any purposes as well as to study, change and distribute it um, and distribute any adapted, for any adapted versions. So the source code has, source code has to be accessible. So uh, free software is a matter of liberty, not price, and users are free to do what they want with it, uh, including redistribute uh, the, the software free of charge, or sell it, or charge for related services as support or warranty for profit. Now the open source and Libra, uh, uh, Libra software terms um, emerged a bit later. Open source is mo was more related as um, a technical aspect of the software itself, more meant for the market, even though it's adapted almost everywhere now. And Libre is, comes from Roman languages, which um, uh, indefinitely means it's free. It means freedom. Not as in free of charge, but freedom. So, uh, yeah, excuse me. need to get used to this. Yeah, so... Well, another thing is that um, free software movement is a social standpoint as well. Uh, the ideas spread beyond the source code, so into forms of different social projects, movements, and organizations like uh, the free culture movement, open content, open access, um, hacker culture, zeitgeist, you might know the Pirate Baron uh, group, and there, the Pirate Bay Initiative. Um, CrossFit is supposed to be open source fitness project and many, many other of those. So let's just um, go through the main pr principles of those uh, movements that are quite the same. So first one, access to information and freedom of information. Free and open access to technologies sharing, that's knowledge, technologies, ideas, openness, decentralization, importance of community and collaboration, thinking out of the box, solving problems in new and in innovative ways, no judgment by race, gender, age, education, or social status, and probably many more. So, um, the first the uh, time I got to know Linux free software or open source was around 2003 and soon after that I joined the Slovenian hackerspace Kiber People. Uh, so Kiber People's activities were, um, were basically um, emerging from free software movement. So people were developing and promoting free software. Uh, so there was like a lot of projects being worked on like always something new, something innovative. Um, there will be talks, there will be workshops, there would be art projects, there would be, we had open festival, art festival, like we would climb roofs and set up wireless network around Ljubljana, we would have high politicians um, debate, we would invite high politicians debating about data retention, patents, um, um, about, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, so, and we had the first and only computer museum in Slovenia. Um, we had a lot of news, we had core media people coming in and writing articles, TVs, radios, it was, everything was so exciting, something, always something going on. So, um, I immediately adapted the idea of free software, like, Meeting creative, passionate, innovative people, um, always something going on. 
So, yeah, I still love free software, <laughs> free software, even though, anyway. Yeah, I, I never programmed. I was always more uh, fascinated by the social phenomenon of free software movement. Like, the immense extent of it, thousands of projects, hundreds of thousands of people, passionate, creative people, and it's like impossible to count the number of them, uh, how many people contribute to these projects. One of the most um, uh, interesting way to see this is to attend big events uh, like that, like people crawling around, gaining knowledge, being really, really passionate about all these projects. So one of the things that I was interested about is what drives all these people to contribute to this project? What, what is really the main core? Is it, I don't know, gaining knowledge? Is it, is it finding job opportunities? What is it? Is it just passion itself? So the opportunity was that I made um, a research for my thesis. So this was my, um, my primary question. What are the main motives that lead individuals to voluntarily contribute to this project? So I had, I wanted to have like target population and certain criteria. I wanted people to voluntarily participate. That means um, mostly in their free time, not being paid for that. And um, yeah, that's voluntary. So mostly in their free time. Then as various spectrum as uh, possible of free software projects, that's technical, non-technical movements that support free software movements um, or just support ideas or anything. So and any type of activity and, or tasks that's programming, coding, fixing bugs, or just uh, having talks, sharing ideas. Um, so yeah. So, uh, oops. Yeah, so I, I made an online survey and I got quite a lot of response, I would say, for three weeks' time, and it was top high season of the summer where everybody was on vacation. So I still got enough for the thesis, and, you know, I was quite satisfied. So just quickly through population that I got. I got, as you see, really a lot of diverse projects, from software to core, like, umbrella, like Free Software Foundation, hackerspaces, events, and many, many others. So I was really satisfied with that. Then I got, um, I know this is really a lot of text, but just to show that I got really diverse activities that people do, uh, do at um, spaces, I mean, at communities. So I was very satisfied with that. <laughs> um, now, the duration of contributing, most of them have been contributing for more than one year, which is quite a lot, you know? So, um, and as well, most of them dedicated one to 10 hours per week or even more, more than 40 hours. That's like all your free time if you have eight hour job. <laughs> so that's a lot, um, quite a dedication. Of course, the typical um, gender representation for geeky stuff. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking, but yeah. Gender most male, of course. What I was surprised about, because it was it is voluntary contributing, is the age. I was expecting a bit more um, younger people, I would say. But here you have you see most 30 to 40, and then 41 to 50. Quite a lot of these people. Um, I was really interested about education and stuff like that. So I was really surprised that most of them are, were employed or employed and they are very satisfied with their job. Um, so what I would, I mean, I assume that many of them were looking for job opportunities, maybe. So that was interesting. As well as I was interested in, in marital, sta marital status, so more than half were in a relationship or married, which Maybe it doesn't mean anything, but still, if you're in a relationship, you know, maybe your dynamics in your free time changes a bit, especially if you have children. And as you can see, like 40% of people have children. <laughs> yeah. So just a bit of representative. I got like people from all over the world, mostly from Europe, 
and Slovenia. So, okay, this is the main thing, but it won't be long. Just quickly, the main categories that I got out or I already kind of planned before um, are internal and external motivation. So, let me just quickly tell you a little bit about that. So, internal uh, motivation is, it, it is about, I mean, motivation is what drives our behavior. It's what makes us do something um, in our life. So, internal, internal motivation is um, some internal wish and need for new experiences, challenges, testing own capabilities, finding happiness, independence, control, joy, fulfillment. It is driven by interest or enjoyment in a task or action itself and emerges from inside of an individual. So it is kind of a natural tendency of a human being and it's one of the key elements of person's cognitive, social and physical development as well as the main source of positive feelings vitality and satisfaction in life in general. Um, so, so, okay, the external is uh, performing activities to achieve a certain goal that's outside of us. Um, certain outcomes and it's uh, opposite of internal motivation. So it emerges from in influence outside of an individual. So the usual external, uh, external motivators are rewards like money, or grades in school, or showing a desired behavior, um, and similar. So, what turned out is that internal motivators were quite, well, or mo more important than external. Um, so let's look at this. Um, here are a few classes of motivation, of internal motivation. So one is intrinsic altruism or community. Altruism is doing something good to other people, not expecting something in return. Uh, so let's look at intrinsic motivation. This is like one of the most important ones. So um, contributors are very much um, motivated by, you know, feeling of, they, they contribute because um, it makes them feel joyful, satisfied, accomplished, you know. So, happy, it's a lot of fun for them to contribute, it's challenging, they need challenges and that's what contributing brings to them. It makes them feel competent and they can express themselves in the communities or contributing to the projects. They can make personal friendships and getting to know how technologies work, that's really exciting. So these, this turned out to be very important as well as altruism. People want to help others, people want to do things to share, make projects and share them with public. Um, they want to share knowledge and experience, give back to the community. So, especially they want to feel that they can contribute to changes and changes, processes of changes in the world in general or changes with technologies. And these communities help them achieve that. Um, one other part of internal uh, motivation is community, which is very important as well. So we're human beings, most of our times we're part of some kind of group. So community is very important for us. So in communities we find sources to satisfy our psychological and uh, yeah, needs and culturally specific interests. Um, in communities, we feel like we belong something bigger than ourselves, and yeah, research has also shown that in communities, uh, individuals feel very connected, very motivated, and they feel more passionate, and they contribute more in communities. So, in communities, they as well feel like they are heard, they're valued, they're included, and they very much love going to events. <laughs> okay, so let's just quickly go through external motivators, which I already mentioned what they are. So these are the main two classes, future rewards and personal needs. Um, as I said, external are important, but they more come as an 
extra value, like it seems that internal uh, motiva motivators are m more important and these are like additional value that they get or maybe some hope for the future. Um, so these are the main motivators regarding external. So looking for job opportunities, better job opportunities. I, I also um, had the question about, you know, wishing if, if they wish to be paid in the future for this kind of work and it didn't seem like important. So yeah, social, human capital, self-development, gaining knowledge, skills, experience. Um, peer recognition is quite important, building and widening network of peers, socializing and creating with like-minded and inspiring people. And self-marketing, reputation building, that's all in the package of future rewards. And one of the more important is as well, um, one of the most important actually, I would say, for external motivators, personal needs. So people can modify, modify technologies to um, adapt them for their, their personal needs. So, yeah. So conclusions, I already mentioned a lot. Um, as I said, internal motivators are the most important. People feel passionate about it. They feel creative, they feel challenged, and all the rest comes with it. And I think that's one of the core principles in life. We have to do what we feel passionate about, right? So as you could see as well as the with the population, people are married, they like have jobs, they're satisfied there, but still they contribute in their free time to these projects. So I think that says quite a lot. So I guess that's it. A lot more could be said. Oh, here's more, um, yeah. So you can contact me, unfortunately, there's not much time. You can find my Slovenian thesis online. There's a lot of data, a lot of graphs. You can see in all details everything. So thank you. <laughs>